Please rise for the opening hymn.
Welcome to church on this chilly, chilly uh, morning. Uh, it's, it was cold enough that, that, I, that Wally actually said he might think about getting his winter coat out. <laughs> he did say that. So <laughs> you know, it's not like I made that up. <laughs> it is good to see so many faces that faced uh, the frigidness uh, this, this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm L.J. Arnson, a, a member here at the of the congregation, um, and uh, Pastor Jim will be back from vacation on Tuesday, uh, I believe. Um, because I'm used to sitting in the pew as opposed to standing in front, uh, there are some times when I neglect to say sit down when you're supposed to sit down, or I neglect to say stand up when you're supposed to stand up. So if you know you're supposed to stand up, stand up. And if you know you're supposed to sit down, sit down. Uh, let's take just a, a, a couple of seconds to turn and, and, and greet the people that are seated, seated around you and probably don't shake hands in nowadays, but, but share the peace of the Lord with them. Okay, let's uh, quiet our hearts, our minds. Now let's begin this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy upon us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you. pray. O oh God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We'll read the psalm responsibly. Give the king your justice, O God. May he judge your people with righteousness. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people. May he live while the sun endures. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass. In his days, may righteousness flourish. May he have dominion from sea to sea. May his foes bow down before him. May the kings of Tarshish and of the Isles. May all kings fall down before him. For he delivers the needy when they call. He has pity on the weak and the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their lives. The word of our Lord. Uh, good morning. Uh, the first reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. What had been hidden from previous generations is now made known through the gospel ministry of Paul and others. In Christ, both Jews and Gentiles participate 
and the richness of God's promised salvation. The reading begins. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels on Midian and Epa, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of our God. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Ephesians chap chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. What had been hidden from previous generations is now made known through the gospel ministry of Paul and others. In Christ, both Jews and Gentiles participate in the richness of God's promised salvation. The reading begins. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles, for surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless richness of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. Gospel reads, In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I also may go and pay him homage. <coughs> when they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts will be alive with the Holy Spirit and acceptable in your sight. Amen. Come, they told me, pa rum pum pum pum. A newborn king to see, pa rum pum pum pum. Our finest gifts we bring, pa rum pum pum pum. To lay before the king. There is something about the song of the little drummer boy, originally titled Carol of the Drum, that resonates with many people. It was written in 1941 by Catherine K. Davis, and it was first recorded in 1951 by the Trap Family Singers, yes, of Sound of Music fame. But it didn't receive much airtime until recorded and released by the Harry Simone Chorale in 1958. In 1968, it even inspired a stop-action Christmas television special the song tells the story of the Magi inviting a drummer boy to join their journey to find the new king, to join with them in following the light. As the wise men offered their finest gifts, the drummer boy offered his. We too are given the invitation to follow the star and come. To honor and to celebrate the birth of Christ, we too give gifts. Like the little drummer boy, we are sometimes have is hesitant to come because we have no gift that fit, that's fit to give a king. Just as the drummer boy did, we play for the new king. The question is, what tune are we playing to celebrate the gift that was given us on Christmas Day? Will the ox and lamb keep time as we play? When we're done playing, will Jesus smile on us? Will Jesus join us as we rum pum pum pum? Today, we celebrate Epiphany the light of the star leading the wise men to the light of the world that is the baby Jesus. References to light are found throughout today's texts. Isaiah brings up the issue of light in the very first verse of our Old Testament text. For your light has come. Isaiah is predicting the birth of Christ and Christ's position as the light of the world. Our Isaiah text continues and tells us that nations shall come to your light. With these words, Isaiah is foretelling that others will come to know Jesus as Savior. And the first of these from other nations coming to the newborn king are the wise men from the east, bringing the very gifts that Isaiah foretold. Isaiah's words tell us that salvation is not just for the Israelites, but will be for all nations. Come, they told me. The words in Isaiah were written shortly after the Israelites returned from exile in Babylon. Times had been bad in Babylon, and they were not great upon the return to Israel. The temple had been destroyed, and those returning to Israel found themselves in a state of perpetual gloom and doom. 
If we were to read the two previous chapters of Isaiah, a negative, pessimistic mood permeates both chapter 58 and 59. It's as if the writer of Isaiah is saying, we have no gift to bring that's fit to give a king. And then suddenly, the writer lifts the mood and proclaims a positive future for Israel. Yes, it's bad now. Yes, life is miserable, but we are to receive a gift. The situation that we find ourselves in isn't permanent and it isn't important. What's important is what we are to receive, a newborn king to see. From Isaiah, we are led to Paul's letter to the Ephesians, where Paul tells us that his mission is to make Christ known to the Gentiles. To see something properly, we, of course, must have light. Paul's task was to bring the good news, the light that is Christ, to the Gentiles. Now, during his four mission trips, Paul always went first to the synagogues and spoke to the Jewish people before completing the mission that Christ had given him. By going first to the Jewish people, Paul was saying that, yes, Christ came first for you, but you can't claim God exclusively, Christ exclusively as your own. Isaiah and the other prophets are clear. Christ was given to everyone and not just a chosen few. Paul tells us that when Isaiah spoke of nations coming to Israel's light, the reference was to the inclusion of people and not the exclusion. The proof of the exclusion, inclusion, was in the wise men that we meet in our gospel today. Our finest gifts we bring to lay before the king. An unspecified number of anonymous wise men arrive at the palace of King Herod in Jerusalem. We guess at three because there are three gifts, but we truly don't know the number of wise men. These wise men had been following a star. A light was leading them to a newborn king. One would assume, as the wise men assumed, if a king was being born, the king would be born in the palace of a king. So even though the star pointed elsewhere, they stopped where human knowledge told them that the king would be. Their assumption, of course, was incorrect. After receiving scriptural interpretation, the wise men returned to the light. They returned to following the star until it stopped over Bethlehem, where the Magi honored Christ, the newborn king. So to honor him when we come. And the wise men honored Christ with gifts. Their gifts are well known, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And the symbolism of those gifts is a sermon all by itself. The little drummer boy's gift was to play for Jesus. He gave what skills and talents he had to the newborn king, and in return, Jesus smiled approvingly at him. Now, our celebration of Christmas 2021 is over, and we have given presents to and received presents from an assortment of friends and relatives. Hopefully, everyone smiled approvingly. It's time for us to follow the light and lay our gifts at the feet of Jesus. To know what gift to give someone, you must know them. To know what gift to give Jesus, we need to know Jesus. We need to read scripture so that it can shine a light on Jesus. What does he do? 
What does he say? Jesus tells us that we should pick up our cross and follow him. Now, Jesus is the light, and we should follow the light. The twist is that we do not follow the light just to a baby in the stable. We follow a light that turns the world upside down. We follow a light as, as Jesus walks from Bethlehem to Nazareth, through Galilee and Samaria, all the way to Jerusalem. We follow a light to the Garden of Gethsemane and to a cross on Golgotha. We follow a light to and from the tomb and ultimately to Christ's ascension into heaven. As we reflect on Christ's earthly journey, we understand that Christ deserves more than any gift we could bring him. And because we understand our gift is inadequate, we hesitantly ask, shall I play for you? We should indeed play for Jesus. We should play for him by using every talent and skill that we have. We should share the many blessings that God has given us. Jesus told us to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger and visit the sick. Jesus directed us to do these things for these, the least of his brethren. Our gift to Jesus should be to do what he asked us to do, using the blessings that God has given us. And as we do this, we need to ask ourselves, would Jesus say amen to what we are doing? Would Jesus say amen to what we're saying? Now, it's easy to look at Jesus' instruction in a general sense and say, well, I do that. It's, it's much more difficult to respond specifically to Jesus' instructions. Yes, we donate presents to less fortunate children at Christmas time. What do we do for those same children the rest of the year? Do we even acknowledge that they exist? Yes, we donate to the Salvation Army during their Red Kettle campaign. Do we think of them the rest of the year? Yes, we donate food for the needy through the food pantry. But do we share food when we're approached by someone in a parking lot? Six summers ago, I personally failed to feed the hungry. And it, and it troubles me to this day. I was coming home from a rehearsal in Fergus and stopped at Casey's to buy supper. I planned on eating it while I drove back to Battle Lake. A man approached me in the parking lot asking me to buy him a taco. Uh, I mumbled no to him, got in my vehicle and drove away without looking back. Yes, he had been drinking, but I should have bought him something to eat. I failed to feed Jesus when he was hungry. One of the things that I truly love about Zion, that is as a congregation, that as a congregation, this church doesn't just talk the talk, it walks the walk. Across the parking lot, God's Acre sits, a gift to the community, inviting everyone to come. In a small freezer just off the kitchen, containers of soup sit ready to go to people's homes and warm hearts with warm soup. Prayer shawls and quilts are made and distributed. Our Helping Hands group stands ready to serve the needs of anyone. Zion sponsors a mission to the Philippines and a yearly mission trip to Jamaica. Our action group spearhead after church fellowship and, and volunteers within the church service. Even the many cars parked midweek in our parking lot call people into God's house. As a congregation, 
we are playing very loudly for the newborn king. And if you listen closely, you can almost hear the voice of Jesus saying, Amen. But we can do more. Occasionally, when we are playing, we will hit a discordant note. It will grate on our ears and on the heart of Jesus. We are born into sin. Each and every day we stray from the ways of God and our playing falls short of righteousness. God sent his son to the little town of Bethlehem that we might receive salvation. Jesus took all of our discordant notes and carried them to the cross where he died that we might live and play on. Our sins are forgiven. God's gift of grace saves us on a daily basis. I played my drum for him, harumpa pum pum. I played my best for him, harumpa pum pum. Then he died for me, harumpa pum pum. Me and my sin. Thanks be to God for his saving grace. Amen. Please rise and let's confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, I am not going to insult your intelligence and read uh, the announcements for you. There, there are a couple that you should pay attention to. Quilting resumes tomorrow morning uh, at, uh, at 8.30 a.m. Uh, next Sunday, as you look forward to a week from now, or unfortunately, I heard it's still going to be cold. Uh, there is an adult form at 9 a.m. and uh, Faith and Films at 6.30 p.m. Uh, in, uh, uh, in the evening. Uh, this morning after church, uh, basically you have a, a no-host uh, social hour, uh, which means there's coffee, and uh, at the end of it, we need to clean up after ourselves. So. Uh, you're welcome to stay for coffee, and then after coffee, make sure you, you clean up your own mess. Uh, and uh, is there any announcement that needs to come? Yes? Well, okay, as long as it's not too hard to hit, because I'm not good at hitting pitches. That was a baseball joke. I got it. You, thank you. My wife was frowning at me. I could tell under her mask. <laughs> Good morning. I wasn't planning to make my Friends of Friends pitch this early because our event isn't until um, it finalizes on the 22nd of January. But after that sermon about the gift of giving, I just thought I kind of have to do this with that. <laughs> and if those of you who don't know about our organization, Friends of Friends, um, it's a local organization that started with... Um, people in the neighborhood just being concerned that there were many people, too many people going without, without, uh, particularly in the area of food. So we have, this will be our 14th annual event. Um, I think all of you, most of you have heard me give this pitch before. Um, we support all the, all the funds that we raise go to the seven food shelves within Ottertail County. Um, and we also supply funds to support the weekend children's backpack feeding program. Last year, we were able to sponsor 710 children. And what that means for the weekend backpack program is, is that on, on the many children who have food insecurities, um, they don't know where their meals are going to be on the weekends. They know they'll get breakfast and lunch at school, but they don't always know what's going to happen on the weekends. So a backpack or a bag of food is sent home with, with children that they know have needs. It's all done anonymous, anonymously and carefully um, so that there's not a stigma to it, um, so that they know that it is food that they will be able to assemble and eat themselves over the weekend. Um, unfortunately, as we know, every year I give this pitch um, that one in eight of people in Ottertail County suffer with food insecurities. So that's, that has not declined. And my last visit with someone who works at a food shelf said that they're, with the price of food, as we all have been at the grocery stores, uh, their needs are increasing, their visits are increasing. So um, normally we have a very festive and fun event, and it's usually the fourth weekend in January. Because of COVID, we once again are doing a virtual event. So. Uh, we will have a virtual auction. If you participated in it last year, we changed our venue this year to a what we're hoping is a more user-friendly site to get to and donate. There's lots of items. Um, there's also an opportunity to donate. If you don't need any items, you can just donate. You can sponsor a backpack. I will be putting a poster up in the narthex out there, and I will leave a couple of brochures out there. Um, Anybody have any questions? No, you've heard me do this before. And I would just like to say thank you to just about everybody here, or to everybody here, because this church donates and donates and donates. So thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Then we will call on our ushers for the morning offering.
Please rise. people of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all God's creation. Lord God, we pray that we live our lives as you intend. Help us to keep our values, beliefs, and moral senses as reflections of your will. Bless the leaders of our nation and the leaders of all nations. Remind them that their power is temporal and Jesus' power is eternal. Make them aware that it is your world and they are simply caretakers. Guide them to work together for the good of your people. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that you may bless those elders that, who have had and continue to have an impact on our lives. Give them comfort and security so that they may continue to share their wisdom with us. Be with them wherever they may be. Keep them alive in your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. We pray today for those in our community with special needs, those who are experiencing an illness, hunger. May they feel your healing power. We pray for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones. May their friends and families feel the comfort of your loving embrace. We pray for all the concerns we hold silently in our hearts and pray for all those dear to us that we name now in our hearts. Give them your peace. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our world as we begin a new calendar year. Help us deal intelligently with pure hearts as we face the many challenges that confront us. Help us feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and aid these the least of our brethren. Give us the strength to invite others to come and the courage to play for you. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you today for being with us always. We thank you for making us whole with your gift of the Holy Spirit and your promise of eternal life. We ask that you keep us on your path and protect us from those who would lead us astray. Keep us mindful of our failings and our need for grace. Make us humble servants who are dutiful sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, growing daily in faith, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you.